Hi, I'm Femi OK, you're in the stream. Today, the fault lines between gun control and gun rights. We'll be looking at those and also the debate right now that's all over the news, and that is 3D printed guns, these things back here. We'll be talking about that in just a moment. That's right. I'm Malika Bilal. We'll also speak to youth activists who are continuing their push for gun reform months after March for Our Lives changed the conversation in the wake of the deadly Parkland attack. We want you to join the conversation on Twitter and YouTube. Should gun violence in the United States be treated as a public health issue? For some people, it seems like there should be an obvious yes to that question. But in the United States, public funding for research into gun deaths and injuries has been severely curtailed for years. For more on this, we're joined from Northampton, Massachusetts by Megan Ranney. She is Chief Research Officer at the American Foundation for Firearm Injury Reduction in Medicine, known as AFFIRM. It's one of the groups that wants more research into gun violence. Adam Skaggs is Chief Counsel at the Giffords Law Center to Prevent Gun Violence. He joins us from New York. Craig Deleuze is Director of Legislative and Public Affairs at the Firearms and Policy Coalition, which advocates for gun rights in the U.S. He joins us from Sacramento, California. And here in the studio is Lawrence Nathaniel. He is Executive Director of the National Organization for Change. He's also co-founder of the upcoming National March on the NRA. That's the National Rifle Association. And that rally goes ahead on Saturday. Welcome all of you to the stream. Now I want to start with a member of our community who heard we were doing this topic and tweeted in this. This is Dana who says, if something is dealt with, as a public health issue, that's not to say that it is just one more service that health professionals provide. It is an approach to dealing with health issues. Google public health approach and you'll see issues like seatbelt use, bike helmets, tobacco use. Megan, that all sounds rational and reasonable. Why then is gun control and gun use not on that list? That's a great question. So the biggest reason that gun violence and gun injury is not on that list is because, as you said earlier, there just hasn't been funding to address it as a public health issue. At its core, gun injury is no different from any other type of injury like car crashes or pool drownings or poisonings, right? And we've dealt with all of those as public health issues uh, over the last four or five decades. We've developed a whole science behind preventing injury. Mm -hmm. And we haven't done it for guns simply because there has not been funding to, to do the research and the epidemiology and the intervention trials that we've done that have successfully decreased car crashes by over 50%, that have decreased uh, poisonings by carbon monoxide um, and so on. Adam, there's something called the Dickey Amendment, which if it, I don't bring it up, someone else will bring it up. But for our international audience, just explain what that means. Sure. The Dickey Amendment is a, um, a, a law that was passed that basically uh, prevents federal agencies like the Centers for Disease Control uh, from conducting gun research. Um, uh, these were passed uh, in the yeah, 1990s yeah. after um, yeah. the CDC began um, researching a number of different yeah. gun issues and looking at the causes uh, and possible ways to prevent um, uh, gun injury in the United States. And uh, this was passed in 1996, and it essentially said that uh, funding that was appropriated uh, to the Centers for Disease Controls couldn't right. be used uh, to advocate for or against gun control. The practical effect then, of that was that federal research just stopped, uh, right. and we haven't seen any federal dollars uh, of any reasonable magnitude dedicated to studying this problem uh, since the, the mid-90s. Right. So the, the challenge there is he, he's already contradicted himself. He said that it didn't allow for research when specifically he just stated the words of the amendment, which means it, it didn't eliminate the ability to do research. What it said was you cannot advocate for gun control, meaning you cannot advocate for implementing policy restricting the constitutional right to keep and bear arms. And the problem is, is that the folks at the CDC, if they can't advocate for gun control, then they then for some reason they've chosen... I'm not so, Craig, research. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to disagree with you there. So after that amendment was passed, Congress actually took away from CDC the amount of money that they were spending on fire injury, firearm injury research. And CDC and, 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 and actually any, can't any do advocacy any, in general. Any, any, Congress is, any Congress can decide 
uh, to put those resources to put resources towards that. And that doesn't even include the discretionary resources that they have amongst the hundreds of millions of dollars they have to do research. So I, I'm going to agree oh, with Craig uh, on the point that uh, a Congress could, any Congress could uh, mm -hmm. appropriate those dollars and allow the CDC to begin doing this life-saving research again. Yeah. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, we haven't seen that done. So there hasn't been and money provided. There and haven't I, been federal dollars. And I can give you the so, reason why you haven't seen it done is because Congress is terrified of the NRA. The reason why is because the NRA and gun manufacturers, they have the ability to move voters. So they are terrified of the NRA. And if the Congress is to push for CDC research for gun control, well, I'm going to say, though, um, and Lawrence, I'm going to just, one thing is, so research is not a partisan issue, right? So we have successfully decreased deaths from car crashes without taking cars off the road. We actually well, have no more cars just, on no the road one, now than we had in the 1950s. And so good by, research by the way, can find us ways to no keep one, people safe, right? No one disagrees right. with the idea that we should be doing research. The problem hmm. is, is that when you go into research with the idea that, Guns are bad, and we need to ban guns. Well, then your research is obviously going to be skewed. When was the what last we, time you talked like to a see, researcher? What we would all like that. to see is research. What we would all like to see is research uh, that is uh, that that does not necessarily advocate, but is actually unbiased research. And unfortunately, for the groups that do do it, it it's anything but unbiased. All right, so guess, no. give me a moment because I just want to get the community in. Malika, go ahead. Yeah. Right, I want to bring up this perspective, you know, taking into account what you all are saying here. This is Mike. He's a PhD, and he writes in, in terms of funding for health and gun mm -hmm. violence, I think it's a couple of things. Politics has reduced available funding. Fear of being seen as political and awareness that there are fewer funds has prevented scientists from submitting relevant grant proposals. But then he takes this in this next tweet to a more personal level, uh, an issue we've covered here on the stream, but I think is important to remind people. He says that lack of awareness uh, that suicide accounts for 60% of gun deaths and beliefs in incorrect ideas has led people away from prioritizing projects looking Looking at suicide and firearms, and he gives a stat that around half of all U.S. suicides result from firearms. That's from the CDC. Lawrence, I want to go to you with that because that's bringing it down to a personal level, and I know that you can relate to that. Yes. I went to a poor community. I lived in a poor community. I went to a poor school. Our classrooms were shoved in with like 30 plus kids. Um, I have seen students hide guns in their book bags. I have seen students hide guns in their shorts and we had metal detectors. And usually our school system, they, they talk to us about this. They, they say, hey, y'all, we're going to have, um, you know, gun violence in your area. When someone dies, because we know not to expect a child to, uh, one of our friends to come to school. There is literally no research for the African American community where mental health is being ran rampant. Literally, I walked in on my mother trying to kill herself. I lost an aunt, I lost an uncle. So yeah, I don't wanna see that happen to anyone and research will take that a long way. It is sad that we are now seeing more gun violence than we are seeing car accidents. I lost three sisters right. in a car accident. And Bamberg, oh, actually, South oh, sorry. actually, most recently, they've discovered there are actually more people dying via car accidents than than by gun violence. But I agree. Hey, let's mm -hmm. re let yeah. us research suicide and suicide prevention. And there are groups like both the NRA and the uh, National Shooting Sports Foundation that are working with suicide prevention organizations in order to help address the issue. I, I don't disagree. But when we talk about gun violence, we're forgetting that it is a violence issue. When you are talking about uh, when you're talking about uh, gun suicides, you're talking about a suicide issue. We're focusing on, you want to focus on the tool, and we're saying focus on the problem. Mm. Um, I, I hear what you're saying, Craig, although I think that our, that community member who tweeted in said it's the, uh, the fact that these things are readily available that makes uh, that compounded. It, it, but it, I, 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 I want to push, it, on, it, I wanna push yeah. on just a little bit to a story that has been generating plenty of headlines over the last few days. You all know it's 3D printed guns. Now, a U.S. federal judge on Tuesday blocked a Texas organization from publishing the schematics for such weapons. And that was just hours before they were about to go online. Well, Al Jazeera's Rob Reynolds has more. In 3D printer technology, machines extrude minuscule layers of plastic or resin that gradually build up three-dimensional objects using computerized patterns. We asked professional 3D printer Peter Minotti to make one for us. Consumer printers are available for as low as $300, so anybody that has $300 can essentially print one. 
3D printable guns have no serial numbers, so they're untraceable. They don't require permits or background checks, so anybody can have one. And because they're plastic, they can go through any metal detector. So you hear the, uh, the, the issue laid out there. I want to play a video comment that we got from the CEO of a 3D printing company when we heard we, we were doing this story. This is what he told Al Jazeera. Open source gun designs have been around for as long as I can remember. Before the internet, you could get them by mail order, buy them at a gun show. And the tools to make guns have been around since, well, since the Luddites failed to stop mechanization. Let's say we were successful at banning or stopping people from uploading and publishing gun designs on the internet. That really wouldn't do anything. There's many ways to acquire and capture the data today. There's low cost laser scanners and 3D digitizers that you can put any object under and it will capture that 3D data in a matter of minutes. So really this whole conversation is pointless. It's pointless. Adam, Ooh. push back against that. What, what, what do you think? Well, look, you know, I, we're dealing with a situation as uh, the package that you just played uh, demonstrated where putting, um, making downloadable guns available to anybody anywhere means that somebody who can't go to a gun store and buy a gun because they'll fail a background check, maybe they're a domestic abuser, they have a, a long criminal rap sheet, uh, whatever the reason, somebody who's unable to pass a background check and buy a gun uh, can just download one uh, off the internet with a click of a mouse so long as they have uh, uh, the 3D printer. That's problem one. As we heard, these are untraceable, so law enforcement can't uh, trace them in any way. That makes them a, an illegal gun trafficker's dream come true. And because they're plastic, they can be smuggled through uh, traditional metal detector technology. So, uh, you know, this is a serious threat. Uh, it's a, a problem that, that warrants a, a serious response. And to just shrug your shoulders and suggest, uh, you know, nothing to see here, this doesn't matter at all, I think really uh, vastly understates the real risk presented here. And Craig, I want to show something from your Twitter thread uh, because you, you tweeted out the President of the United right. States. He says, I'm looking into 3D plastic guns being sold to the public. Already spoke to the NRA. Doesn't seem to make much sense. You then did a subtweet. It's called free speech. And the Second Amendment at real Donald Trump. They make perfect sense. Unpack that more. Okay, well, understand what we're talking about here is not giving people, uh, it's not giving people 3D printed guns. It's providing information and resources to understand exactly what they are. Uh, for example, um, it is, by the way, it is illegal to print or manufacture an undetectable firearm. So it's already against the law. Uh, just like it's against the law to manufacture, uh, to create Molotov cocktails. But yet I can go get a copy of the Anarchist Cookbook, which includes information on how to create a, uh, how to create a, uh, a Molotov cocktail. Understand here, what we're talking about is free speech. We're talking about the ability to communicate Craig, information. Craig, why make it and simply easier, because though? we don't why, like why the information, it, simply because we don't like easier? the information, we, have, we think we can infringe on it. Megan, go ahead. I, I just, yeah. I'd like to push back on that so free speech argument. Exactly, I would say we have restrictions um, based on kind of the idea of public health on a lot of things that can uh, potentially create problems for the wrong people. So, you know, you can't buy cigarettes before you're a so certain age. Um, and so why make wait, it easier wait, wait, wait. for people to jump break in real quick? We're talking about fundamental rights. Yeah. Smoking is not a fundamental right. Free speech, the right to keep and bear arms are both fundamental, constitutionally enumerated rights. So Here's important. The problem. Why do we, we put so much right? emphasis on the Second Amendment right, but we do not put that much emphasis on our Fifth Amendment? 15th Amendment right, the right to vote. We have so many lobbyists arguing and fighting for the Second Amendment right, but we literally have no one out there fighting for the 15th Amendment right. And still, kids, no, these no, guns no. are toys. Let, let these guns look just clear. like toys. The reason why kids organizations their... like FPC, the reason why organizations like the Farmers Policy Coalition and the NRA work, it's not because of lobbyists and corporations. It's because of the millions of individual voters who inform themselves and show up to the polls. So, young man, I would have to disagree with you there. Well, I'm going to disagree with you, Craig, when it comes to the idea that uh, this is a First Amendment issue uh, that is just like a book that gives you the instructions of how to make a Molotov cocktail. If you've got the book, The Anarchist Cookbook, uh, a human being can read the printed page. That that written speech gives uh, uh, communicates a message to the person who can then choose to go out and build a Molotov cocktail or not. Uh, what you're talking about with these downloadable guns, uh, it's not a bunch of ones and zeros that are communicating to a person who can
can decide to do with that message what they will or not. Mm. Uh, this is uh, computer code that speaks not to the people, but speaks to a printer. Uh, and when you click the button, uh, what comes I, out I, of that I, is a fully operational I just operational have to tell fire. you that you are, you are so demonstrating I, a complete and utter lack of understanding I, of, a, of exactly what this is. So, well, I, I, no, so it is, it I'm going to jump in there, Greg, just because agree, I think there's, there's someone online logically. that would agree with you. And I, I want to bring their voice in as well, just so people know so who's in our community. Say. Gentlemen, gentlemen, <laughs> quiet in the gallery just for <laughs> a jump, second. Jumping in there a little bit. So this is the Socialist Rifle Association, and they say, as an addendum, 3D printed guns will not fire without necessary metallic parts, such as the firing pin and ammunition. They cannot pass through a metal detector undetected for this reason. And they go on to say, work to build a society where people don't feel the need to own guns. Start by addressing poverty, racism, police violence. This way is harder but more beneficial. I mean. All right, so guess we cannot have a gun control conversation without paying attention to the new wave of young activists who are influencing this debate. So over the last couple of weeks, the March for Our Lives youth-led organization has been on its road to change tour of U.S. cities. Now it's part of their effort to change gun laws in the wake of the deadly Parkland shooting. Have a look. Should I bite my tongue or should I march with every stranger from Twitter to get sh done? Used to hang my head low, now I hear it loud. Every stranger from Twitter is gonna burn this down. Could you smile any wider? I love that song. All that is right, like really right. the best song. I would hesitate to say, maybe about a year ago, if we were going to have somebody of your age on a show like this, you would be here as a victim, uh, telling your story, not involved in what happens next. I think in the last year, this has changed. Yes, it has changed dramatically, especially after the Parkland um, shootings. Um, the youth are getting pissed off. Basically, they are mad. They are frustrated. They're upset that no one is listening to us. We are like li we are literally screaming for help. We are dying. We are screaming for help, and no one wants to help us because guns are such a polarizing issue in America for some reason. Where it should be our our right to vote because we get affected by it in the African American community, just like we get affected by violence in the African American community. Our voices need to be heard. So that's what we're doing. We're standing up. A wave of youth all across the world, not just in the United States of America, are standing up. And it's been happening in Europe and France well before Parkland even happened. And now today, the United States youth are standing up and the NRA wants to push back against us by issuing threats. Like, come on. What? Oh, threats? Explain. Threats. All right. So after the Parkland shooting, multiple times, the NRA released videos, especially um, Gosh, let me think of her name. The NRA spokeswoman video, Deanna Luce, if I had her name right. Um, she basically told the Parkland students it was a direct threat, like, your time is up. You gun activists that have been working for the past 60, 50 years, the NRA has just been pushing back against them for what reason? Like, if we can sit at the table, this is all what youth want. We want to sit at the table, talk with the NRA, come up with a plan that works on both sides, that push for, to protect people's Second Amendment right, but also push for safer communities, schools, and centers for students and young people, because young people are out there dying. I don't, have, I don't feel like I should have to worry about my brothers or sisters going to the store and then not coming back, or my mother walking to work and not coming back. But gun activists out there are like, these are our guns. And I just want to make the point clear, youth are not out here to take your guns. We're out here mm -mm. fighting for simple background checks, to repeal the Dickey Amendment, to, gosh, we're out here fighting for a lot of stuff. <laughs> so yeah, so, but our whole thing, our whole thing is what we want to do is we want to make a change. We want our voices heard. We want to tell people that just because of our age and you are killing us, we are a part of this problem too. Mm. So that's why Lawrence, I Lawrence, and I'll a, say as a, yes, as a physician, right? So as someone yes, who has yes. spoken out on behalf of the victims, the hundreds of victims that I've taken care of over my 15 year career as an emergency physician, I've taken care of the suicides, the homicides, the assaults. And many of us have been trying for a decade plus to get folks to listen to the fact that exactly what you said, this is not about gun control versus gun rights. This is about public health and safety. And I just want to thank you for bringing but, your voices to bear on this. But public policy is all, has always been about trying to take away 
trying to take away the, the big scary guns. You, you want to talk about the real challenge with gun violence in this country. 80 to 90 percent of it, 80 to 90 percent of it is either drug or gang related. You so can that's actually take I, the over That's not true at all. That's, an, <laughs> that's not true at all. If you, take, yeah. if you take out suicides, 80 to 90 percent of it is drug but, related. But all you, you can't do take out suicide. You can't take, you can't take out suicide children. to make a point about, about but, but the then, violence then, part. Then like, it literally, then gun control is a bigger issue than just. But then what you are talking about is a suicide problem. And let's just take, for example, the country, nation of Japan, which is number two of 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 industrial nations number six overall in so suicides and they don't and even have access we, lead the, and and we lead the nations in guns and guns we lead the nation in guns and we are failing in education what kind of sense them? does that make it is a suicide if someone, issue no but so if, if someone tries to commit suicide, suicide and fails 90 percent of them will go on to live so if you can have someone attempt suicide we're talking about megan and craig i i hear both of your points i don't know that our audience does so i'm going to jump in there and use that as my chance to bring in this um, viewer comment. This is from John on Twitter. He says, March for our lives. He's talking about the youth movement. I will let you finish. I will pose this next thing to you, but I want to push on just a little bit because I want to get our viewers' comments in. John mm -hmm. says, the March for our lives has done a spectacular job of taking tragedy to manifest action towards opening up a conversation that's long overdue. And I'm often inspired by the dedication of these young activists. So when we talk about taking tragedy, this hasn't just been about guns per se. We got a video comment from a Parkland student who talks about how he's taken that tragedy and channeled it into making an impact on the ground. This is Kai and this is what he said. We needed to address the larger issue at hand. We needed to address mental health because our students are under a lot of stress and they don't know how to sublimate that stress and all those negative emotions into positive outcomes. We needed to teach students how to be their best selves and how to take negative emotions and reach positive outcomes. And that's something that we haven't really been focusing on as a society. And so he is the founder of the Societal Reform Corporation, and he's uh, all about mental health and making sure that young people have access to uh, the help that they need. Craig, I promise I'd let you finish, but keep that in mind. What do you make of that? Well, here's the thing, and, and I agree with the points that he's made. When we talk about the issue, the, the gun is just the tool. He's talking about why are, why are people committing suicide? Why are young people engaged? Why is that? Why are young people going to schools from, in and 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 their shootings occurring in schools? Why is there gun violence in urban inner city communities? Let's mm -hmm. look at the reasons why, and not necessarily focus on the tools. But the other thing we need to do, if we're going to have a conversation, is we have everyone has to be able to be able to sit at the table. What winds up happening is, and you look at what happened in the CNN debate or the CNN discussion, and all of these is. So Craig, that was you generally a have huge one person channel. who shows up to talk. Craig, that just, then just for our international audience, Craig, shut, Craig, then just people start talking over them and start shouting them down. Craig, as I talk That's over you, let me just explain what that CNN debate was. It was a huge, big town hall which caught yeah. people's attention. It was just after Parkland shooting, and it, it blew up in in a big way. And it was it was a huge. A uh, big moment for the United States yeah. and for broadcasting and for mm -hmm. having that conversation. Let me just wrap up now. We could actually do this show every single day and still not be done with the debate. Craig, hold tight for me just for a moment. Uh, actually, for the show, I'm going to be honest here, for the show. Lawrence, there's a, there's a march coming up mm -hmm. in a sentence. Tell us about the march. All right, so Saturday, yes, Saturday, August 4th, um, Parkland students will be joining forces with the founders of the March on NRA who have been working so hard. Um, we are taking over the streets of Fairfax, directly in front of the NRA. Um, mm -hmm. To our knowledge, um, we looked it up and did research. It had never been done before. So. See y'all on Saturday. <laughs> All right, and there are sister marches around as well. Oh yes. And um, for if you're interested, you can look at www.marchonnra.org. And in the interests of being fair and balanced, Firearms Policy Coalition, go to their page. They have a Take Action page, and their ta Take Action page is as passionate as your Take Action page, Lawrence. That is the debate in the United States right now, Malika. I will end with this tweet from Asir who says, disarm today. Let the moms, dads, siblings, and families who tragically lost a family member decide future weapon regulations. Megan and Adam and Craig and Lawrence, thank you for joining us. Thank you for bringing your insights into the conversation about gun control, gun violence, gun rights. Melika and I will always see you online. Thanks for watching.